Hey guys, welcome to this guide where I'm going to be showing you how to make your own lamp zapper. This is a really fun little project that I showed recently that'll let you control a lamp or some other small device using an NES zapper gun. So here are the parts that I'll be using for this. Of course, we've got the zapper gun, a 350 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery, battery charging board from Adafruit, a really cheap Arduino clone, an infrared LED, a 1K ohm resistor, transistor, a power switch, and a 3D printed board to mount the Arduino on. For the receiver, we've got a project box, a second Arduino board identical to this one, an infrared receiver, a couple of extension cables, which will be hooked up to a relay, which will switch on and off our lamp or whatever we have plugged in, a spare phone charger that we'll use to power the Arduino, and a USB cord that we'll chop up to plug it into that, and a button, which will let us manually trigger it without using the gun if we want to. There will be a few other little odds and ends, like some heat shrink tubing and some wires and stuff like that that we'll use. And then of course, there's this guy. This is where I put the infrared receiver on mine when I stuck it to my wall. So yeah, this should be a really fun, quick build that you could knock out in a weekend. You can see it's kind of divided into two parts here, but I'm going to try and fit them into one video. So with all that said, let's get started. Alright, so starting with the zapper, let's talk a little bit about how this is actually going to work. As I mentioned, the Arduino board that I'm using is a clone of the Arduino Pro Mini. It's based off the Mega 328P chip, and it's nice just because of how low cost it is. But you'll notice there's no USB interface on here to plug it into your computer to program it. Instead, it comes with some header pins that you can attach like so, and then use something called an FTDI cable to plug it into your computer and program it. So the boards themselves are only a few dollars a piece, but the cable to program it is between 15 and $20. So it's up to you whether or not it's gonna be worth it buying an FTDI cable to be able to program these things, or if you wanna spend a few more dollars and get another Arduino that already has a USB interface on it. Pretty much any Arduino board is going to work with this project. The only thing that you really need to watch out for is to make sure that the board that you get has a pin capable of doing PWM. In this case, pin number three which is what we'll be using to control the LED. Now we can't connect the infrared LED directly to the output pin on the Arduino. It just doesn't put out enough power to work very well. So we'll use a transistor, which you can basically think of as a switch. And what we'll do is we'll connect this to the output pin on the Arduino and the other side of it will connect the LED to the same power source that's powering the Arduino itself. So in other words, we'll be using the signal from the Arduino to switch on and off power to the LED. If you're holding the transistor like this, the leftmost pin is gonna be connected to ground. The middle pin is what's going to be connected to the output pin on the Arduino, and in between the middle pin and the output pin on the Arduino, we're going to have a 1K ohm resistor. And then the rightmost pin is going to be connected to the ground pin on the LED. The positive side of the LED is going to be connected to one of the power pins on the Arduino. So these two wires that you just saw me connect, these are gonna be providing power for the Arduino. On this one, you can see that those two pins correspond to ground and VCC, which will be connected to our battery. So at this point, before we connect anything else, probably a good idea to go ahead and plug this into your computer and program it. I have two Arduino sketches that I wrote, and I'll put links to them in the written guide that goes along with this. One of them is for the zapper, and the other one, of course, is for the receiver. So go ahead and plug this in and program the zapper portion of it to your board. All right, so as I said before, if you're looking at the transistor from this orientation, the rightmost leg is going to ground, the middle pin is going to one end of the resistor, the other end of the resistor is going to our PWM pin, which is three in my case, and the leftmost leg on the transistor is going to the ground pin on our infrared LED. The positive pin on our LED is going to one of the VCC pins on the board. And then I went ahead and connected two wires to pin two and a ground pin, which I'll run to our trigger. So this is the sensor that was in the zapper. The way it worked is this sensor right here would look at your screen and when you pulled the trigger, everything on the screen would turn black except for some white squares around the ducts. 
and this sensor was able to tell whether or not you had it pointed at one of those ducks. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but there's a really interesting video that I'll link to that explains exactly how it worked. Ours works kind of in reverse because we've got an infrared LED that will be pointing out the front, sending a signal to another Arduino board. You can see the shape of this board it has a couple of grooves at specific positions so they line up with these notches here inside the gun. We're going to use this same space to put a board in to rest our Arduino and our infrared LED on. You can do that with a piece of perf board or something if you want to take the time to cut it out to fit right. But if you want something a little bit cleaner, I designed and printed this out. You can see that the notches on this board correspond with the notches on the original board. And it has this raised platform here with the notch cut out so that you can easily position and aim your LED straight out the front. So this will sit inside the gun like this and our controller board will sit like this. We're gonna have the 3D printed board that I mentioned right here with the Arduino. That'll be connected to the trigger switch, which is right here, these two wires. We'll have the battery and the grip right here next to this weight. And then the charging board is gonna be right here oriented so that the USB port points out the bottom so that we can plug it in and charge it. And then we're gonna carve out a little piece right here to put a power switch. and it doesn't matter which pin you hook up to which wire. So this is the charging board that I'm using from Adafruit, and it's pretty simple. We've got two pins for input here, five volt and ground, and right next to that, we've got another ground pin and one that'll connect us to the battery. So the Arduino board that I'm using is rated for between five and 12 volts, but I've been using it connected directly to this without any issues. So your mileage may vary depending on what board you use. It may be that you have to use something like the PowerBoost 500 or something that outputs five volts. Now the board is gonna sit in here like this but you'll see this peg is in the way. So we're just gonna snap it off with some pliers and then we're gonna use a zip tie to hold this in place. You also need to remove the corresponding peg on the other side. So these are the wires that are supplying power to my Arduino. The brown one is ground in my case, so it's gonna be connected to this pin right here, and then the red wire will be connected next to it to the battery pin. But I'm gonna put a switch in line with the red wire. There's no enable pin on here like there is with the power boosts. And I'm gonna cut a notch right here in the handle and put the switch there. So there, when the switch is pushed this way, then the two pins on the left will be connected and it'll complete the circuit and switch on our zapper. Alright, so yeah, I'm just holding that in place with a zip tie right there. It's been working pretty well on the other one. If you can't get it secured nice and tight, then you could reinforce it with a bit of epoxy there. Alright, so we'll plug it in first without a battery attached to test it out. And now uh, we'll plug in our battery. And now we'll test charging it. And we'll secure the battery in place with a bit of double-sided tape. All right, so there's one last step for the zapper. When I built the first one, I found that it didn't really matter where I was pointing the gun. It would pretty much always trigger the receiver. And what I found, and this may apply more to the orange guns than to these gray ones, is that light was coming through the sides of the barrel and the gun itself. So like if I held my hands over it so that the light could only come out the end, it would work fine. So I tried several different things to fix that, but the solution I wound up settling on was pretty simple. I took a straw and wrapped it in electrical tape and stuck it down the end like that so that the light is directed out the barrel and can't really leak out anywhere else. And it seems to work great. So there we go. Might seem like kind of a silly solution, but it seems to work really well. And that's it for the zapper. Now for the receiver, which should go a lot faster. 
We'll have this extension cable going into our project box and supplying power to our USB adapter. That'll power the Arduino and also supplying power to this extension cord. This is what the lamp will be plugged into on the side of the box. And switching power on and off to this cord, we'll have this relay, which will be connected to one of the pins on the Arduino. And then to two other pins, we'll have our infrared receiver and this button. Both of these will be able to trigger the relay to turn on and off the lamp. Go ahead and program the lamp sketch. Then we're gonna connect a few things. First, we're gonna connect the infrared receiver. The middle pin is gonna go to ground. The left leg, we're gonna connect to pin 11. And the right leg, we're gonna connect to one of the VCC pins on the Arduino board. Now you have a couple of options with this. You can either embed it directly in the side of your project box, if you want that to be what you actually shoot at with your zapper, or you can connect it to the end of a cord so you can put it somewhere other than wherever your project box is located. Now, since you're gonna to need to chop up a USB cable to plug into the USB adapter to power the Arduino, then what I did was use the rest of the cord to extend the infrared receiver. All right, so we've got the signal pin of our infrared receiver going to pin 11. We've got the power pin on the receiver going to one of the VCC pins and ground is going to ground. So here's our button that we'll have mounted to the side so we can trigger the light manually and bypass the infrared receiver. I've got it hooked up to pin 10 and ground pin. And now for an obligatory disclaimer, we are going to be building something that is plugged in directly to an outlet in your wall, which is of course very dangerous. So if you're not comfortable with working with this kind of thing or you're inexperienced, find somebody who has done this kind of thing before and is comfortable with it that can help you out. In other words, I'm showing how I did this and it worked for me, but proceed at your own risk if you're following along. The way this will work is we'll have the signal pin, which is the S1 right here on the bottom, connected to pin 12 of the Arduino. And then the plus pin right here above it will go to VCC, and the top one will go to ground. On the other side, we've got these three slots to put wires, where we'll actually be opening and closing the connection between two halves of the extension cord, which will be connected to our lamp and turn it on and off. We're going to be using the two on the left side here. And one of the questions that I got several times after posting the first video about this was what kind of devices you can safely plug into this. And that really all depends on what kind of relay you get. This particular one is rated for 10 amps and it shows it here at various voltages. Here in the US, we'd be looking at the 125 volt rating. And so that's good for quite a bit. It's actually listed as being for small appliances. I'm only ever gonna be plugging a lamp into it, but if you plan on plugging other things into it, like someone has suggested plugging a Raspberry Pi into it that they could turn on and off with a zapper gun, which is a pretty cool idea, uh, just make sure that whatever you're gonna plug into it, you do some math and make sure that you're actually under this limit that it can handle. So what I've done here is I've connected two sets of wires to the VCC and ground pin on my header pins. One of those is gonna to go to the relay, and the other one is the USB plug for powering the board. The reason I did it this way is so that I'll still be able to access the header pins to reprogram it if I want to. Just be careful and make sure that you don't bridge any neighboring pins. And then this third wire in this set is gonna to go to pin 12, which will control the relay. So if you look at a US plug head on, you'll see that the left one is a little bit thicker than the right one. This is referred to as the neutral side and the right one is referred to as the hot side. We're gonna connect the two neutral wires and run the hot one through the relay. The white wire should be neutral, but go ahead and check continuity on a voltmeter just to make sure. And I found that if you twist these and add a little bit of solder to them to hold them together, it makes it a lot easier to insert them into these slots. And go ahead and give it a good tug and make sure that the wires are in there nice and securely. All right, so about all that we have left to do now is put everything inside of our project box. I've already cut some holes in the side of mine for the extension cord that our lamp will plug into, the extension cord going into it, and a third hole for our infrared receiver to come out of. I've also put a hole in the top for the button that'll manually trigger the relay. So this is how I arranged everything inside my project box. I've got my relay up here, the Arduino board here, extension cord that I'll plug my lamp into, and the extension cord supplying power to everything. I do not recommend that you use hot glue to mount anything inside of here. You're gonna to wanna to use something much stronger and permanent. I've always had good luck with two-part epoxy, uh, but I'm sure that there are other options out there as well. 
Now as for this guy, I made him out of perler beads, which you can find at Walmart or on Amazon or at any craft store. There are several YouTube channels dedicated just to this, so what I'll do is I'll link to one of those in the written portion of this guide, and I'll include the pattern that I use for this as well. The only thing specific to this project is leaving one of the beads out, somewhere down here, for the infrared sensor to go. And for actually attaching it to the wall, I used command strips, along with the back part of one of the command hooks. Well there you have it guys, from start to finish, how to make your own lamp zapper. If you like this kind of thing, be sure and hit subscribe, I'll be doing more projects like this in the future, and if you have an idea for a project, let me know in the comments below. Also be sure and check out the written portion of this guide, there will be a full list of parts that you need and high res pictures that make it easier to follow along. And if you plan on making one of these, be sure and stop by the forums at pseudomod.com forum where you can get help and show off your work. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.